In this clip, we'll show you how to produce time series plots in R. Now, if you just want a dead simple time series plot, you shouldn't go to R. It's more complicated here. Do it in Excel if you have your data in a spreadsheet. You want to look at R if you're anyway working in R and using it to produce forecasts or time series models and then want to produce additional plots. Or if you want to produce beautiful plots, then you're at the right place. First, uh, this is the website where you can see the complete documentation of what I'm, I'm going to do here. We'll start by including, let me clear this, we'll start by, I'll clear everything. First, we'll start by setting our working directory and importing some libraries that are important for us. And then we import data. We'll just read CSV files. You can get the CSV files. There's a link from this website. You could also check out the link in the description to this clip. And let's see how these data look like. So we have four different series, aggregate inflation, core inflation, energy inflation, and food inflation. Uh, let's look at one, the top of the aggregate inflation file and we have inflation for a range of countries 13 i think and we also have some date information here as you can see these are annual data 1970 71 72 and i think the last observation is 2013. so the first thing we want to do is to produce time series data there are different time series formats in r the one I'm going to use here is the XTS format. This works together quite well with ggplot. So that's why we imported ggplot and the XTS library. And ggplot is really the Mercedes of um, graphical tools in R. Now, there is a fairly straight, straightforward way to produce uh, XTS series at this stage. Perhaps we'll see that best if we look at str ag. At this stage, the x, the variable where our years are in, is recognized as an integer, so not as a date. So we want to translate that into a date. The xts command that does that is the following, xts with two inputs. The first one, all the data, and the second one gives you the date information. So what we could say here is all the data is everything in our ag, let's look at the aggregate inflation first, everything but the first column. So that's what the negative one does. And the date is in the first column in ag comma one. We'll say order by that tells XTS this is our date. Remember use question mark XTS to call up the help function. So if we run this, we'll get an error message. Error in XTS order by requires an appropriate time-based object. So that one here, the first column, as we already saw looking at our, as we already saw here, that first column isn't a date. So let's comment this out. That didn't work. So how do we, do we translate that first column into a date? Let's try the, the obvious one. We use the sdate function. So let's just run this to see what we get. So we'll take the first column in ACK and try and force this to be a date using the s.date function. Now what you see here now is we get a number of dates. So on the first side that may have worked, but as you can see, these are now actually daily pieces of information. 25th of May 75, next one's 26th of May 75, but we had annual data. Remember, we had 1970, 1971, 1972. What has happened here? Now, it turns out, uh, as all equally to, say, MATLAB, a particular integer represents a particular date. And it so happens that the integer 1970 represents the 25th of May 75. And the day 1971 represents the next day. That's the 26th of May 75. So that hasn't quite worked. What we need is something else, especially when you have annual data. To use XTS, you have to, to do a little work around. So this is how we do it. We use still that XTS command, and the first bit is unchanged. 
The data are everything but the first column. In the first column is the date information. Then we say order by and now we give the date. But what we're going to do is we take that first column at comma 1 but we paste to it and paste 0 because we don't want the space in between. In between we paste to it dash 01 dash 01. So let's just look at this to see what we get if we just run this. Uh, paste. Yeah, that's what we want. And we put that in here. So what we now get is actually strings. We get sort of strings, but they look like particular dates. In particular, it looks like the 1st of January of every year. 1970, 1st of January, 1971, 1st of January. And if we now try to convert these to dates, we do get exactly these dates back. And now these will be recognized as dates. So this command, order by as date with our little patched update, that should work. Let's see whether it works. We run and indeed it works. And now you can see our ag data frame has turned into an XTS object. Okay, with dates from 1st of January to 1st of January 1970 to 1st of January 2013. In fact, you could have attached every any date in the year. You could have attached the middle day or the 1st of July to this. This is just a little workaround if you have annual data. There may be better ways. Uh, email me if you know better day, better way. So we'll do that for all the other three data frames, and they're all nicely converted into XTS data frames. So. What we now need to create time series plots is the following. And then let me just illustrate that with a little example. And that's just something you know, and that's what you came here to watch this video for. You need something like this. Let me just run this command and then uh, look at this. So what we need is the following. We basically need... I've I created two mock data series, okay, with dates one, two, and three for Montana, three inflation numbers, and then for Lakeland, different country, three inflations. And what we need is we need to stack all these observations into one data frame, okay? So that was one series, 2.4, 3.2, 2.9, and then the next series for the next country is 4.5, 4.4, 5.1. Because we have more observations and we have actual years and our countries have real names. But this is what our data need to look like such that we can produce nice time series using ggplot. Now, fortunately, I'll just comment this out. It's not really part. I was just to illustrate what we need. So we now want to use our aggregate, our data frame here, and we need to stack all of these data on top of each other. So it turns out there's actually a nice function for this, and it's the stack function, okay? And here's how we use it. We create a new temporary data frame. We only need that to plot the data. And it will be a data frame. And let's go to the second input first. We want to use, we want to stack the data of our data frame. So here's our data frame. Core data of the data frame selects everything but the date. And then we want to create a data frame from this. So S dot data frame, just the core data. And then we want to stack it. And our index, that is going to be the left date column that we also need stacked. That is the index of ag. What is the index of ag? Let's just try that. Index of the aggregate file. That is just our dates. Okay, and you could try core data ag will just give you the data. So let's try this. We have our temp data frame. Let's look at this. And this is exactly what we wanted. Date, data, and the first country is Austria. Australia, I can't remember, and then 
At some stage we get to the end of Austria and then Canada starts and we replicate the dates and then the Canadian data come. So that has exactly done what we want. Here I'll just change as you can see that uh, a slightly funny standard names here and I just change the names of the three columns. So if I now look at temp uh, my columns are called year, inflation and country. So they make more sense. So, and now we can plot. And here's how we use ggplot. Now, this clip isn't going to give you a great introduction to ggplot. You have to get that from somewhere else. But if you know your basics for ggplot, uh, then you will understand what's going on here. Or perhaps you just follow along. ggplot, what we do is, First, we basically, it's called, we create the canvas, okay? You call the command ggplot, then your data frame you're using, that's temp, and then this AES stands for aesthetics. I, I have to admit, when I did this first, slightly counterintuitive, because what comes now isn't really the aesthetics, but rather sort of the core of the plot, but here we go. <clears throat> On our x-axis, we want the year, that's our date variable. On our y-axis we want inflation. And now we say color equal country. That was our third column which specified which country the data come from. And we want different plots of course for every country. And by saying color equals country, ggplot will recognize, ah, oh, okay, you want a different plot for every country and you want to give it different colors. So if you just do this, let me just run this you get an error message. It says, no layers in plot. So we actually haven't created a plot yet. And that is what this last thing does. So here we've created the canvas. And now we tell ggplot what to do on that canvas. Basically, we wanted to plot a line. All right, so let's just do that. Run, and here's our plot. Already quite beautiful, all sorts of countries. We have the legend here, different colors years on the axis, inflation, really nice. Okay, so we we could actually try, what do we get if we uh, don't want point, uh, pl uh, lines, but points? Oh, I think it's point. I may get an error message. I don't quite remember whether it's points or point. I, it was point. And now we just get everything just with points. Okay, I could perhaps ex explore with different type of plots here. You can ask Dr. Google to find out. So how ggplot works is now quite convenient. Let, let's go to the next line. We're basically doing exactly the same, but we are now assigning that plot to an object, p1. You can see p1 appears here. And now we can add things. So for instance, we can determine the y-axis limits. So I just run this and it has done something, but it hasn't shown anything yet. And now I'll add a title, GG title, and then in inverted commas, what I want to want it to call. So let's run this line. So we've done something, but we haven't seen it. If we want to see it, we just say P1, or in your command window, you type P1. And now we see the plot, and now we see all the changes we've done. The limits of the y-axis go from negative 10 to 30, and we now have a title, aggregate inflation. Beautiful. So this is how ggplot works. You create something, you create an object, and then you sort of just add attributes to it. So in the next one, I'll add a lot of ad attributes. Turns out lots of the real aesthetics att attributes are in the theme function. Okay, and you can see, for instance, here, access title X, X. So, for instance, I don't want a title to uh, X and Y. Then I want the text to the axis, to the X axis. I want it to be black and of size 15. And all sorts of things I'm determining, determining here. I'm not going to tell you what all of these do. You can figure these out yourself. So, I run this. It has done something. And let's see again. 
just what does the visual change look like so I've gotten rid of the gray background created plaque access so this is more of something we you could uh, put in a paper um, and the title is bold that was here plot title element text bold and different height and I'll actually put little annotations to it again I'm not going to go through this in detail We'll just look at it and you see I'll add a little text annotations to highlight a few of the series out because uh, one of the things I did here is I got rid of the uh, legend. Okay, so we've now created a really nice plot. The last thing I want to show you in this clip is how you can create a multiple plot. So this is already a multiple time series plot. We have multiple time series. But now we want to see several plots sort of in one frame. I created one earlier. So let me show you what we want to create first. So you have an idea here. Okay. So this is this is what we want to create first. Four similar type of plots in sort of four windows, but in one image. So let me delete that. So we've already created one. That first one we've already created because that is this one here, aggregate inflation, and it's saved in P1. So basically all we're going to do now is we're going to repeat this process just for the three other inflation series. So we've done that for aggregate inflation, but we also have data on core energy and food inflation. So we'll do exactly the same. We create a new temp, but now with core inflation. And now this code is just a copy of previously, just with different titles. Okay, core inflation. So let me just highlight everything here up until here and run. It's basically the same. Of course, the annotations change slightly because uh, we have different series. So let's look at P2. We all save this to P2, our second picture. So let's look at P2. Core inflation looks different. We only have two annotations here. Uh, and then we do the same for P3. So we define a new temp now with energy inflation. Okay, new temp now with energy inflation. And otherwise we create the same graph, but we save it in P3. So let's look at P3. Nice energy inflation. And you can see uh, Sweden had some wild hike in energy prices uh, in the late 1980s. And then we do the same for food inflation. So new temp object now with food inflation. And the graph. So look at P4. And yeah, that's our food inflation. We got a warning because there's a missing piece of information. So, but now we want to combine these four graphs to give our beautiful graph that uh, puts them in, in a grid. What we use for this is the package grid extra. So you need to install that if you don't have it. And then we need to um, call the library. And now it's really only one line. It's, it's that simple. The command is grid.arrange. Then we just list all the pictures which we have saved in objects which we want to arrange P1, P2, P3, P4. And we want to arrange them in two rows and two columns. So let's run. And here we go. Beautiful. Uh, you could, of course, think of how to change that. We could think of uh, four rows and one column. Let's see how that would look different okay or one row and four columns different again clearly I think for this particular example we would want two by two so here you go you learned how to use XTS typed data with ggplot to create beautiful time series plot.
you may be interested in a couple of other uh, uh, clips we produced. In the top right corner, you can see a link to running regressions in R. In the bottom right corner, you can see a link to uh, estimating ARIMA models in R.